In this bucket, we had a sugar wash fermentation that took 15 days to go from a 1.080 all the way down to a 0 0.990. Now let's find out if we can make it go faster. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Beaver and today we are embarking on part two of the Back to Basics series. Now, as promised in the previous video, the theory part of your Back to Basics. So we're going to take our distillation process and break it down into segments and talk about each of the segments individually. We'll be doing a theory video as well as a practical. Now, here we have the practical video. In the previous video, I promised that I will be doing a sugar wash with no nutrients whatsoever. In this bucket here was the sugar wash that I did with no nutrients. It started off at a 1.080 and took a full 15 days to finish fermenting. Now that's a hell of a lot longer than my normal fermentation state. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is step by step going through how I do a sugar wash to get it to ferment out in at least six days. Sometimes it takes only three days, sometimes it takes a bit longer. Now let's get into the steps on how I do my sugar washes and what nutrients I use to ensure that my sugar wash ferments out to dry really quickly. Step number one, whenever I start my fermentations, I ensure that I clean everything thoroughly. Now this is an extremely important step and as I said in the previous video, I'll link it up here, that sanitation, not like in the beer industry or in the home brewers for beer, but sanitation is very important. You don't want anything funky to happen inside of your fermenters, especially with something like a grain wash or a fruit wash, where you have a lot of other things that can get into your fermentation and spoil the whole thing. With a sugar wash, the risk isn't as high, but I still go and I wash all my fermenters before I do my fermentation, before I add anything into it. I always have a bottle of no rinse sanitizer on hand. After washing my buckets, all I'm gonna do is before I start adding the hot liquids and the cold liquids into here, I'm just gonna spray it down with some no rinse sanitizer to ensure that nothing can get into my fermentation. Now this step is not necessary. If you are not scared of getting infections and stuff going into your fermentation, but I rather spend the little bit extra time to ensure everything is nice and clean. Now the next step I do when I do my sugar washes after making sure everything is nice and clean and ready to go is I boil some water. While I'm cleaning my fermenters I get a pot on the boil as you can see here. So in this pot we have water boiling. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to slowly start adding our sugar and stirring as we go along. In this step it's very important not for your sugar to burn down to the bottom. Once I have the sugar all dissolved and I can feel there's no big clumps or anything left over, it's time to start adding the citric acid. Now one tablespoon of citric acid is enough in this five liters of water and five kilograms of sugar to ensure that that separation happens and the sugars actually invert. Now after adding the citric acid, give it a quick last stir and then let it roll or boil for another 20 minutes. Now while the sugar water on the stove is boiling away for that 20 minutes, I like to prepare the first batch of my water. Now this is gonna be normal room temperature water that I'm gonna be adding into the bucket, testing the pH and getting this water's pH to the level that I want. Keeping in mind or remembering that sugar doesn't really change the pH of the water but that citric acid we added will change the pH a little bit, but we'll adjust for that. We'll do the bulk of the adjusting now. To do that, to prepare your water, you're gonna need the following things. Number one, you're gonna either need some potassium carbonate or some bicarb of soda. This will allow you to bring your pH up. So this means if your pH of your water is below five, by adding some of the potassium bicarbonate, what it will do is it will raise your pH to a desirable level. Keeping in mind that we wanna keep it between four and six to ensure that our yeast is happy. I always aim for around about a five. This gives me a nice amount of headspace to move around. If your pH is too high, meaning your pH of your water and generally 
standard household water it has a pH of around 7 you want to bring that pH down and that's what we're going to use the citric acid for so let's quickly get some water into the bucket use our pH testing strips to gauge the pH and then we're going to adjust it according to what we need quick tip when adjusting your pH oxygenate your water get it mixed up thoroughly and then give it a good three to five minutes before you test it again and adjust keeping in mind that your water will take a while to drop or raise the pH don't keep adding in whatever you're going to be adding if you want to raise or lower your pH just make sure you give it a good amount of time before you test it again if you're going to keep testing and adding your pH will run away from you and then you're going to have to start this whole process over again. Now with our pH sitting comfortable at between 4.5 and 5, I'm happy to start with the next step of the process. Now you can make a yeast starter if you want to or alternatively what I do is in waiting for my water to boil and finish boiling, I add my yeast into this water. I allow the yeast to start hydrating while that is going on now this is going to save you a ton of time if you don't wait for everything to happen at once keep in mind the reason why i do it and how i'm able to do it like this is i know what temperature my water will be once i add that other boiling water into this the yeast we selected for this process will be the super <laughs> super will be the sweet daddy yeast now I'll put a link down in the description below if you want to get your hands on some of this yeast. I just found that this yeast chews through sugars like no one's business. I haven't tested it in grain and uh, fruit yet. If you have, put it down in the comment section below. I'm pretty sure everybody will be happy to know if this works for grain as well as fruit. All I know is this stuff works like magic for your sugar washers. Now while I've got my yeast sitting in the bucket, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my nutrients as well and the nutrients that you're going to be using is 100% up to you it's what you have available to you you can go for your tomato paste washes whatever just ensure whatever you use in there if you're going to go for the tomato paste that it has no preservatives in it as well as to allow to adjust once you add the tomato paste in there to bring your pH back up again because the tomatoes are quite acidic and it will drop your pH quite low so I would suggest if you're going to use tomato paste, start off by adding the tomato paste, getting it all mixed up, take your pH and then adjust it afterwards. Do not adjust it like I do. Now I'm going to be using some super nutrient as well as some DAP or diammonium phosphate in this sugar wash here. I'll put a link down in the description for you to get your hands on it. But you can use Fermate O or Fermax or whatever nutrient you have available use the recommended amount as it is instructed on the packaging from the supplier or otherwise head on to the forums ask the guys on the forums what their recommended time is not working tonight what their recommended amount of nutrient is that they add to their washes i always go with the manufacturer's specification sometimes even a little bit less but for this wash we're just going to use the manufacturer specifications and as always, I'll put the full recipe down in the description box below. First up, super nutrient. Next up, some DAP. Now we're just going to give it one quick stir again. Don't worry, I will be doing a full video on the different types of nutrients out there, as well as doing a comparison between using your normal tomato paste, as well as raisins and your commercially bought nutrients. So with 20 minutes elapsed and this pot now nice and boiling hot and the sugar should all be inverted what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of cold water to this pot so I do not kill my yeast or my nutrients when I add the hot liquid into here so I'm just going to temper this a little bit and then I'm going to add it slowly and stir as I'm going along. Now I just tested my temperature and my temperature is sitting at a nice and toasty 28 degrees centigrade now this should be just perfect for the yeast to actually carry on and ferment this out really quickly. So the final step in this process is just a sanity check and that is to take a gravity reading. So all you need for that is your own little hydrometer. 
All this is going to tell us is how much sugar is inside of this bucket and what is our potential alcohol by volume once we are done fermenting. This will allow us to calculate when we are running our still how much hearts, how much heads we have to take, but that's a subject for another video. So let's quickly test our gravity. Testing the gravity, we're sitting comfortably at a 1.080 again. Exactly the same as the previous sugar wash we did with no nutrients whatsoever. Now just to track the progress of this sugar wash and if you're interested, I'll be uploading a short clip every day to track the progress of this sugar wash showing you how the gravity is going to be dropping over the next couple of days and in the event of anything going wrong, what I'll be doing to adjust my pH, my temperature or whatever, all I'm going to do now is cap this off and let it ferment. I'm going to be insulating it with a nice little blanket so it keeps its own internal temperature as we're hitting winter here in South Africa. I'm going to try and ferment this without any temperature control whatsoever. But if, if it's needed, remember to check out the short videos coming up throughout the week so we can track the progress of this fermentation. Now, if you stuck around this far, thank you very much for watching and have a lucky day.